morning. My name is Walter. So I'm teaching the basic manufacturing technology. In that, uh, in yesterday session, we have started about the shaper, slaughter, and planer. Chapter that is the third unit of our basic manufacturing technology. Okay. In that uh, yesterday session, we have uh, covered uh, some of the topics of uh, shaper. So, what is uh, shaper uh, and its working principle? So, and uh, instructional details of the shaper. After that, uh, the driving mechanisms of the shaper. Okay. So, shaper shaping is a uh, reciprocating uh, uh, machine. So in that, uh, the workpiece is fixed and the cutting tool is uh, reciprocates on the workpiece. In it, uh, a defined path. Okay. So uh, the cutting stroke and the test stroke, both strokes are uh, happened in a shaping machine. So during cutting stroke, the material removal is taking place and the return stroke, it should be in ideal position. So in that stroke, uh, the material removal is not taking place because uh, the cutting it is in the forward direction. And we have discussed uh, uh, so many types of uh, shaping machines in that uh, push type shaping machine generally we have uh, used. Generally, we are using push type of shaping. Generally, we can call the shaping machine as a shaper, right? So the construction details also we have observed, we have learned yesterday, that is base and tool uh, head, cross slide, ram slide, ram, tool post, etc. These are the uh, construction, these are the parts of this shaping machine that have been discussed in the yesterday session. The types of uh, shaping machine also, shapers also we have uh, learned in yesterday's class, right? So, so many number of uh, types are there. Uh, generally, horizontal shaping machine, vertically shaping machine, <coughs> universal shaping machine. So, these are generally used uh, shapers are available uh, while doing the shaping um, shaping operation. All after the uh, we are moving to the driving mechanism. In that, uh, uh, two driving mechanisms are there: reverse quick return mechanism, and slotted lever mechanism. In that, we have covered uh, reverse quick return mechanism uh, because of uh, reverse quick return mechanism. Why we are choosing these mechanisms uh, to increase the production uh, rate? We are using this mechanism. Why? Right? Because uh, during the cutting stroke, the, the cutting tool has to be moved slowly because there is a contact between the workpiece and the cutting tool is there. So, due to this, uh, there is a there is a, uh, if the tool may damage or cutting tool may damage during the uh, meet uh, during the contact. So that's why we have uh, we are preferred slow speed while during uh, during the cutting operation. Now uh, return stroke. In this return stroke, the cutting tool should be the cutting tool is the cutting tool is in ideal position. So that's why why we are uh, using the uh, uh, return stroke is very fast means. Because it is an ideal stroke, so we have to reduce the manufacturing time, right? We have to reduce the manufacturing time. Uh, we are choosing the return stroke should be fast. If we are increased uh, that manufacturing, uh, if we are increased that return stroke is fast, uh, we are increasing the production rate. So that's why we have chosen this uh, quick return mechanisms. In that, uh, we have covered Quick work, quick return mechanism in study session, right? On completion of this period, uh, we would be able to know about 
quick return mechanism that can be called as a QRM and the crank slotted lever quick return mechanism. Crank slotted lever quick return motion mechanism. Understood? So, that we have learned yesterday, which was quick return mechanism. Uh, this is the second uh, quick return mechanism, crank slotted lever uh, quick return mechanism. What have learned the first method? It was quick return mechanism. This uh, has been observed in yesterday's session. Uh, we have observed this figure in yesterday's session. Now we are going to learn the second method of QRM. Uh, it is crank and slotted lever uh, linked to quick return mechanism. Understood? In the animation, we have observed this mechanism already. Already in the animation, we have observed this. Yeah. Now we are now going to learn second method of QRM. This uh, method is already observed in the animation of shaping which right? It is a crank and a slotted lever linked or linked to quick return mechanism. So observe the diagram. So uh, the black uh, color slotted lever is there. So it is oscillation. The oscillation has done due to the rotational moment of the crank. So the crank is rotated. Uh, due to the uh, rotation of the crank, uh, the lever, the slotted lever is doing oscillations. Right? So from these oscillations, we are getting the Reciprocating motion that is two and five. Okay, so that can be observed. Now, in this animation, also we have observing the crank is not a link to QRM. So the slant, uh, crank slotted lever in the oscillation uh, during the rotation of the crank. So these are the main parts of the mechanism. So these are the bevel gates. The bevel gates are, are transferring the motion perpendicularly, right? So from one shaft to another shaft, the bevel gates are transferring the motion perpendicularly and this is the full gauge slide so this is the total uh, between this is full gauge and the rocker arm sliding block full gauge sliding block crank pin and this is the lead screw right so this one is the lead screw and bevel gauge full gauge uh, slide full gauge rocker arm sliding block full gauge sliding block Crank pin and lead screw. So, main parts of this uh, crank slotted lever mechanism. So, this has been observed in the animation. What happening is this. So, this is the ramp. So, one by one, we will go to the points. So driving pinion here. This is the driving pinion. This uh, rotates this uh, case, right? So, one is the Driving pinion and ramp. Third one is the lead screw. Fourth lever and operate. So this is the bevel gates. So operated lever. Six and seven are bevel gates. Eight is the ramp block. Nine slotted lever. This one entire part is the slotted lever. And slotted lever full gate. Ten one ten is the full gate. Eleven the slide block. Crank pin, this one is the crank pin. Nine is the slotted lever and 10, 10 is the full gear sliding block. 11 crank pin, 12 lever sliding block. 13 here lead screw, 14 full gear, 15 5 volts and the remote and 16 full gear slide, 17, 18 or 12. So, so these are the, this is the line diagram of crank and slotted lever. 
mechanism. Here, what is happening in the mechanism? Crank pin 11 is fitted in the slotted link 9. Crank pin here, the 11 is fitted in the slotted link, right? So, bottom end of slotted link is attached to the frame of the column. So, bottom end of slotted link is attached to the frame of column 15. Its upper end is connected to the ramp. The slotted, uh, its upper end, slotted lever, the upper end is connected to the ramp to bottom end of slotted link is attached to the frame of column pin. The crank pin 11 is fitted in the slotted link 9. How it uh, works? Electric motor drives pinion 1, pinion 1 drives the full gear. Electric motor drives pinion 1 here. Uh, electric motor running this uh, pinion 1 and pinion 1 drives this uh, bull gear. A radial slide 16 is bolted at the center of the bull gear. A radial slide is there that is 16 here. It is bolted at center of the bull gear. So here it is uh, center of the bull gear. Radial slide carries a sliding block 12 and a crank pin 11. Right, a radial slide carries this radial slide. Radial slide is uh, carries a sliding block 11 and uh, sliding block uh, 12 and crank pin 11. As the full gear 14 rotates, crank pin 11 rotates. Right, so full gear rotates. Uh, this crank pin is rotated as we have observed in the animation. So sliding block 12 also rotates on the crank pin circuit. Simultaneously, crank pin will move up and down in the slotted uh, slot of the slotted link 9. So uh, it is uh, rotated. As the crank pin moves, slotted link 9 gets rocking moment. Rocking moment. So this rocking movement is communicated to the Ramp. Thus, the rotary motion of the pull gear is converted to the reciprocating motion of the ramp. Right? So, and again, uh, just pressing you. Okay. Electric motor drives pinion 1. Pinion 1 drives the pull gear 14. Observed in the diagram. A radial slide 16 is bolted at the center of the pull gear. Radial slide carries a sliding block 12 and a crank pin 11. Radial slide carries a sliding block 12 and a crank pin 11. Right? These are uh, carries. This is the construction details. As the full gear 14 rotates, crank pin 11 rotates. Right? So, so sliding block which is fitted to the crank pin also rotates on the crank pin circuit. Simultaneously, crank pin will move up and down in the slotted of the slotted link. Nine. So, in this, it can move up and down, right? In the link 9. So, as the crank pin moves, 11 moves, slotted link 9 gets rocking movement, right? This rocking movement is communicated to the ramp here, to ramp. Thus, the rotary motion of the pull gear is converted to reciprocating motion of the ramp. Here, in this diagram, we have observed that the arc length here from C1 to C2 through K, it is the arc length is more. We can easily tell that it is a cutting stroke. From C2 to C1, the arc length is less. So, it is tell that we can stroke. In the link in the position PN, ramp will be at the extreme backward position. Right? When it is at the PN, RAM is at the extreme forward position. Understood? At the PM, when the link is in the position PM, this position at PM, RAM will be at the extreme backward position. So, here, from here, the forward stroke, the cutting stroke has been started up to here. And when the RAM, when, it, when the RAM is at the PM, at this position, it is extreme at forward stroke. So, in a quick 
quickly it is uh, going to the C2 to C1. Okay. PM and PM not tangent strong to the tangent circle. Forward cutting stroke uh, takes place through the angle C1 K C2. Return stroke uh, takes place through the angle C2 L C1 of the uh, it is evident that angle C2 K C1 is greater than the C2 L C1 that has been observed in the diagram. Okay. Angular velocity of crank pin is constant. So return stroke is completed in short time. Therefore, it is known as a quickly turn mechanism. So, the cutting stroke angle C1 K C2, return stroke angle C2 L C1. Cutting time, return time ratio usually varies between 2 is to 1, practically, if it is 3 is to 2. Right? So, uh, that we have learned in this uh, uh, quickly turn mechanism, crank slotted lever mechanism. Understood? Now we are moving to the another topic. So in the quick return mechanism, we have uh, covered before quick return mechanism and uh, crank slotted lower mechanism. Now we are moving to another uh, quick return mechanism, quick return motion mechanism, that is hydraulic quick return motion mechanism. Uh, used in a shape. Okay. So we know already the quick return mechanism principle. That will be again we can uh, recall them. The ram with the cutting tool has to move slowly in cutting stroke. Right? And ram to return quickly in ideal stroke. The first two methods are discussed already. We have discussed this topics two uh, methods the third method is hydraulic mechanism understood um, again repeated you the ram with the cutting tool has to move slowly in cutting stroke we know already ram to return quickly in ideal stroke the first two methods are discussed already the third method is by hydraulic uh, mechanism the quick return motion is obtained by hydraulic means in a shaper. It is known as a hydraulic shaper. So this is the hydraulic shaper. In the former two cases are uh, based on some mechanisms, some uh, arrangements, some links, right? So the quick return mechanisms are obtained with uh, some mechanisms. Uh, that have been observed in the uh, earlier session. Uh, in this, uh, the quick return mechanism is obtained uh, because of the hydraulic, uh, some liquids. Hydraulic means uh, some fluids. So we are getting that uh, quick return motion with hydraulic uh, means in the shaper. It is also known as a hydraulic shaper. Okay. In this also, in all the three methods, we need the forward stroke, the cutting stroke of stone called forward stroke, called uh, cutting stroke. So cutting stroke should be slow and the return stroke should be high, right? So with this, uh, we have to arrange all the three mechanisms in that uh, two methods uh, we are getting with some links, but here uh, that uh, make a, that uh, forward and return strokes are obtained with some hydraulic uh, uh, liquid. Uh, so that's why it is called as a hydraulic uh, shaper. The, the quick return motion is obtained by hydraulic means. In a shaper, it is known as a hydraulic shaper. In crank slotted lever mechanism, we have observed that the crank and the slotted lever is there. The ram is attached to some link. That the crank pin is uh, attached to the slide. If the uh, bevel gear rotates, the crank slot, the crank pin is rotated. The crank pin is which is attached to the slide block. The slide block is also rotated. So uh, due to this rotational effect. Uh, there is a slide movement is obtained on the slotted lever. 
so there is a slide block is uh, uh, is moving on the slotted uh, lever okay so that has been observed in the bank slotted lever mechanism right so now we are going to discussing about the hydraulic uh, shaper in this uh, the title itself we can tell that uh, here the fluid is uh, uh, fluid is the main role while doing the motion mechanics okay so in a, a, every every cyclical uh, mechanisms uh, we have to know these two points uh, one is uh, cutting stroke uh, should be slow and uh, return stroke should be high okay so this is the typical hydraulic shaper uh, so its arrangement is looks like very high because here the mechanism is obtained with the hydraulic uh, hydraulic so that's why Uh, it's a floor space required is high because we have to carry the liquid more, right? So with that uh, arrangement, it should be looks like uh, very high compared to all other shapers. Understood? So here yeah, the floor space required of the hydraulic shaper is high. That has been observed in the diagram. Okay. So this is the typical hydraulic shaper uh, line diagram. So the simple way we can easily understand this hydraulic shaper mechanism compared to the Whitworth equator mechanism and Frank slotted lever mechanism, right? So here, observe this uh, points. This is the reservoir. Uh, it can store the oil. Okay, it can store the any other uh, type of oil. This is the pump. Use to uh, pumping the liquid to here, right? So the pump is the uh, use to pumping the liquid to here, and uh, here the reservoir valve and here speed control is there, right? The reservoir. So trip tops control stroke length, trip tops control stroke length, and here. Uh, reversing lever. So this is the reversing lever. Sometimes its position is here, so that's why we are choosing dotted line. And uh, after some time, its position is here. Okay. And here the cutting tool and the shaper head, operating cylinder, and uh, cutting stroke is in this uh, direction. Cutting stroke is in in this direction. That means it is in uh, forward direction. Okay. So in this hydraulic shaper mechanism, the main parts are pump, valve, chamber, piston rod, operating cylinder, and piston. Okay. So in the animation, we have observed that what is happening is that oil is pumped to right side of the cylinder. Again, you can observe this oil is pumped to the right side of the cylinder. Piston moves left hand side. The piston is moving to the left hand side of the uh, cylinder, right? So that's why ram moves uh, forward direction. So ram moves in forward direction. So where is the shape of dog? So that shape of dog. It's the uh, reversing lever, right? So observe here. So it is moving like this. So its entire ram is moving. So if it is moving, just it is touched to here. What happens? So it is touched to here. Again, this shaper dog it can be reversed. So here, uh, the shaper dog it's the reversing lever. Reversing lever alters valve position. So what it is doing? It is doing the valve position also. So, so it is moving here. So, now what happens? The liquid is coming to here and going to this side. So, oil is now pumped to left side of the piston. Oil is now pumped to the left side of the piston. So, piston 
nose right side ram performs return stroke so oil on the right side of the piston goes to reservoir here yeah. so at the end of return stroke another trip of its reversing lever this one is reversing lever and the reversing lever changes the direction of stroke of the piston so the cycle is repeat Again, tell you that the oil is pumped to the right side of the oil is pumped to the right side of the cylinder. Piston moves so left hand side. Piston moves left hand side of the ram moves forward direction. Next, the shape of the oil is the reversing gear. So, the shape of the oil, what what the what is it doing? During this forward stroke, it is touching this lever. So after touching this lever, here the valve position is changes. Reversing lever alters valve position. So I now pump it to the left side of the piston. Piston moves right side. So ramp performs return stroke. Oil on the right side of the piston goes to the reservoir. So at the end of the return stroke, and the tip down its reversing lever. And the reversing lever changes the direction of stroke of the piston. So the cycle is repeated. So QRM is obtained due to the difference in stroke value. So stroke value means the volume of the liquid which is entering into the left hand side and the right hand side. The volume which is entered at the uh, uh, right hand side is Value which enter to the right side of the cylinder is less compared to the left hand side of the cylinder. Why? Because we have to observe, uh, we have to uh, get the quick return motion. That's why uh, in the forward stroke we need slow cutting. We need slow speed. That's why uh, we have entered the less uh, less liquid value. In the return stroke we can pump the more uh, value, not the liquid. So. So the return stroke is going very fast. Okay? So volume on left side of the piston is small due to presence of the piston rod. Right side volume is the absence of piston rod. So pump pumps the same amount of oil for oil both sides. So as volume is small on left side, pressure is increases. Increase in pressure causes speed of ramp to increase in return stroke. Okay. So these are the advantages of while getting the while using the hydraulic shaper. Cutting tool works uniformly during cutting stroke, and the reverse stroke is obtained without any shock, uh, and uh, more number of cutting speeds are obtained while doing the hydraulic shaper. Good control on cutting speed. The relief valve ensures a safety that is machine is not overloaded. Right. So, so here the QRM is obtained. Again, I tell you. So, due to the difference in stroke volume, volume on left side of the piston is small due to presence of piston rod. Left side piston is small due to presence of presence of the piston rod. And uh, right side of volume is larger to the piston. Understood? You can easily tell that the diagram here. Uh, Value is more uh, again here and here. The less value is uh, available here because the piston rod is here. Due to this piston rod, here we are entering the less value. Here we are uh, presenting more value. So due to this more value, uh, less pressure is acting on the piston. So uh, the right side value is not set. So piston. Pump pumps the same on the oil both sides, and value is small on left side because of the piston rod. So the pressure is increases. Increase in pressure causes speed of ramp to increase in return stroke. Observe here. So here the more value is entered, and it is the less value is entered. But the pump pumps. Uh, uh, Equal volume on both sides, but here the less volume is entered because of this presence of piston rod. So due to this presence of piston rod, less volume is entered, 
So due to this less volume here, the pressure is increases. So more pressure is acting on this piston nut. So the uh, with that the rotor is working, uh, getting very fast. With this, the cutting tool works uniformly uh, during the cutting stroke, and the reverse stroke is obtained without any shock. More number of cutting speeds are obtained, good control on cutting speed, and the relief valve ensures safety that is machine is not overloaded. With this, we have concluded the uh, uh, return mechanisms of Schaefer, which was quick return mechanism, crank slot and lever mechanism, and the hydraulic uh, Schaefer motion. Right? So in the earlier session, we have completed the uh, return mechanisms, quick return mechanisms, <clears throat> crank slot and lever mechanism, and uh, hydraulic shaper mechanisms. Uh, now we are moving to another topic that is various operations performed on a shaping machine and different uh, shaping operations and work holding devices. Okay. Uh, with these uh, topics, we have concluded to this uh, today's session. Right in the uh, last classes, we have learned the constructional details of the uh, shaping machine. We shall now learn the operations that can be performed on a shaping machine. As we have observed the constructional details of the shaping machine, uh, now we are going to learn the operations that can be performed on a shaping machine. Shaper operations, uh, and the generally we can uh, tell that the horizontal surfaces, the shaping machine produces flat surfaces. That is the general uh, statement about the shaping machine. Now, uh, we are moving to discussing the different types of uh, machining operations. So, shaper machining operations. So, in that uh, machining horizontal surfaces, machining vertical surfaces, Machining angular surfaces, cutting slots, grooves, and keyways. Machining irregular surfaces, machining splines, cutting gates. Okay. So these are the operations uh, we can perform on the shape of machine, right? So machining horizontal surfaces, machining vertical surfaces, uh, machining angular surfaces, uh, cutting slots, grooves, and the keyways. Uh, and machining irregular surfaces, machining splines, cutting it. Some of the, uh, I see this is all things uh, we know what is what. So, right, you know, shaper, steps for machining. So, this is the general uh, uh, method while doing the operations for the shaping machine. First of all, we have to fix the workpiece in a vice. So, work is properly held in a vice. Table is raised to a gap of 25 to 30 mm between tool and the work. The length and the position of a stroke are adjusted. The length of stroke should be nearly 20 mm longer than the work. Okay. So the approach and the over one should be 10 and 5 mm respectively. Depth of cut is adjusted by rotating down the feed screw of a tool head. Feed is adjusted about half the width of the cutting edge of the tool. Okay. So these are the steps uh, uh, for uh, machining operations. So first of all, we have to fix the work piece in a vise that may be uh, on the table. And here, the table is raised to a cap of 25 to 30 mm between the tool and work. As we have observed, the shaping machine, the shaper, uh, shaping tool is fed to the workpiece perpendicularly. So, first of all, we have to maintain the gap between the cutting tool and the workpiece with this 25 to 30 mm gap. To that height, we have to raise the table and the length and the position of stroke are adjusted. So based on the workpiece length and uh, based on our uh, machining operation, up to which length we are producing these uh, machining, we are doing the machining operation on the workpiece. 
so that has to be uh, adjusted so uh, that is called the length and the position of stroke are adjusted and the length of stroke should be nearly 20 mm longer than the work as compared to the work piece here we have to uh, arrange the length of stroke is nearly 20 mm longer than the work suppose uh, if we want to doing the 10 mm operation 10 mm slot on the work piece we have to uh, maintain the 30 mm length of the stroke so uh, with that we are uh, getting that length of stroke which should be nearly 20 mm longer than the work the approach and over one should be 10 and 5 mm respectively uh, here uh, the approach and over one should be 10 and 5 mm respectively Depth of cut is adjusted by rotating down the feed screw of tool head. Depth, uh, the approach and over one should be 10 and 5 mm respectively. Depth of cut is adjusted by rotating down the feed screw of tool head. So depth of cut uh, is adjusted by rotating down the feed screw of a tool head. So feed is adjusted about half the width of the cutting width of the tool. Here the feed is adjusted also about the half the width of the cutting width of the tool. Right? So these are the setups while doing the uh, operation. So now we are going to discuss in the machining horizontal surfaces. So to do these uh, steps involved, fix the work properly on the table, adjust the length of stroke, set the required cutting speed, give required feed of the table. Fix an appropriate tool in the tool head. Give suitable depth of cuts for rough cuts. Finishing the job by giving less depth of cut. Okay. So these are the steps involved while doing the horizontal surfaces. And in the animation, we have observed the horizontal machining operation. Right. So what we have to do here, fix the work properly on the table. Fix the work properly on the table. And uh, we have to adjust the length of stroke as we have uh, discussed that the length of stroke should be uh, 20 mm more than the length of stroke that has to be uh, adjusted and uh, set the required cutting speed based on the uh, properties of the cutting tool and material we have to uh, create the we have to uh, develop the speeds right and it give required feed of the table give required feed of the table. The feeding is depends upon the observed already here. The feed is adjusted about half the width of the cutting edge of the tool. The cutting edge of the tool in that uh, half, about half of the width of the cutting uh, we have to give the feed. So fix an appropriate uh, uh, tool in the tool head. Uh, we have to uh, arrange the tool in the tool head with the required head and uh, give that uh, suitable depth of cut for the cuts and finishing the job by giving less depth of cut. So here uh, not only give the direct uh, depth of cut, here we have to increase the depth of cut by time, time, time. So if we want to remove the uh, 5 mm or 6 mm slot, uh, here we are going by step by step up. First of all, 2 mm and uh, next one 2 mm and next 2 mm. So with that, we are removing the material in the amount of chips. And in the similar way, steps involved in a vertical surface is here also fix the job on the table firmly. Align the surface to be machined properly. Fix the side cutting tool in the tool head. Set the vertical slide exactly at zero. Swivel the apron away from the job. Switch on the machine. Rotate down feed screw by hand to give down the feed. Feed in about 0.25 mm. So it has been observed here uh, that vertical surfaces. Here we have to rotate the angle swivel of the tool head. The cutting tool is swivel on the tool head, right? With required angle. With that angle, we are getting to do the uh, vertical surface of the cutting work pieces. So here, what we have observed in this, fix the job on the table firmly, align the surface to be machined properly, 
fix the side cutting tool in the tool head right so we have to do we have to fix the side cutting tool on the tool head because the, the tool post is uh, the tool is having side cutting it is and the set the vertical slide exactly at zero position so we will uh, on away from the job switch on the machine rotate down the screw by going to you down to feed in about 0.25 mm so that has been observed in the diagram so with this we can do the machining of vertical surfaces machining of angular surfaces so in the diagram first we have to observe the diagram after that we are going to discuss about the both these steps so here uh, the angular surface we are doing so angular shaping is carried out to be machine inclined surfaces beveled token etc we have observed in the diagram set the work on the table swivel the vertical slide of tool head to the required angle that is to the left or right and set apron away from the work give down feed as per requirement with this we are achieving the angular surfaces so set the work on the table and swivel the vertical slide of tool head to the required angle so set apron away from the work and give down feed as per requirement here we are observing that in this angular uh, we are totally uh, slide the tool head on also but in the vertical operation only we are rotating the tool head but here the entire vertical slide is also tilted with some angle with a work piece angle so cutting a rack or splines fix up a square nose tool in tool head adjust the length and the position of stroke and reduce the cutting speed to doing cutting rack or splines uh, fix up a square nose tool in tool head adjust the, the length and the position of stroke and reduce the cutting speed give suitable depth of cut feed the work properly to get equal splines okay so these are the steps involved when doing the cutting rack or splines fix up the square nose tool in tool head adjust the length and the position of stroke reduce the cutting speed give suitable depth of cut to feed the work properly to get equal splines so we can get easily uh, the uh, cutting rack or splines that we have observed in the animation cutting the ways uh, fix up the job between two centers so here we have to fix the job between the two centers cut first spline similar to a keyway and move or rotate work by the required amount use the index plate for this purpose okay to do the cutting operation we need a index plate to do the exact rotation of the work piece and the cut first spline similar to a Keyway and move or rotate the work by the required amount. With the, uh, to do that, uh, we need an index plate. With that index plate, we can uh, uh, rotate with the required angle, with the required uh, motion of the. Uh, we can get the required position of the job, right? So fix the job between the two centers. Cut the first spline similar to a keyway. Move or rotate work by the required amount and use index plate for this purpose. So these are the cutting uh, keyways, right? So this is the keyway as we have observed here. Meshing irregular surface. To do this meshing irregular surface, in the animation we have to observe that. What we have to do here is fix the forming tool in a tool post. Give cross feed in conjunction with the down feed. We will the apron suitably according to the contour required. Understood? So here we have to fix the tool post in a tool in a tool post. So here we have to give the cross feed in conjunction with the down feed. So we will the apron suitably according to the contour required. So with this we can get the machining of the regular surfaces. So work should be properly and firmly fixed on the 
shape a table work is spread on the table by three makers using a swivel wise using keyboards or clamps using angle plates and c clamps okay so these are the work holding devices uh, clamping the work on your shaper so we can fix the, the work piece in a three ways swivel wise uh, keyboards and clamps or angle plates and uh, c clamps so, so these are the work holding device so this is the swivel way so it can be rotated swivel way in, in between these two the work piece is fixed and uh, it can be rotated so it can be rotated on this uh, swivel wise the work piece can be rotated and this is the keyboards and clamps so this is the work piece and the keyboards and clamps so here the key slots so we can mix with the key clamps and bolts can firmly fix the work piece and we can do the machining operation on the surface of the work piece by using these key bolts and clamps right and angle plate so here the angle plate is there that we have observed in our late mission also okay so this is the work uh, to adjust the height of the work piece so this is the work piece but uh, to fix up this we have a uh, clamp here to angle plate to this and that uh, angle plate is firmly fixed to this uh, piece slots okay in this way with this angle plate we can fix the uh, work pieces right right so these are the work holding devices as we have observed now so using the screw wire that is a charge so hold in charge the fixture charge and the key bolts and clamps and using the angle plates and the clamps right so let us summarize as we have uh, today we have uh, discussed that the uh, crank slotted lever mechanism, which was treated on uh, uh, hydraulic motion mechanism, hydraulic motion treated uh, on motion mechanism, and uh, what are the operations have to be done on the shaper machine, and what are the work holding devices uh, uh, using in shaper machine that we have observed and learned today's session. Now, uh, based on this, we can do some quiz questions, right? So we are observing some shaper operations also and work holding methods on shaper table, right? We can do some quiz questions so for missing angular surfaces, what should be given to the required angle, vertical slide table, and what vertical slide should be rotated, and what can be fixed on the table directly using clamps and key bolts, so using key bolts, right? So with this, I have concluded this today's session, right, uh, we will discuss a uh, new topic.